Today we have a galaxy that is so far away, so ancient, and so mysterious that it can reveal the secrets of the life and death of stars in the early universe. A galaxy that is 13.2 billion light years away from Earth, which means we are seeing it as it was when the universe was only 600 million years old. A galaxy that has a nebula, a cloud of gas and dust, that shows signs of both star formation and star death, which is very rare and fascinating to see. A galaxy that challenges our models and expectations of how galaxies evolve and interact with their environment. A galaxy that is one of the most distant galaxies ever measured, setting a new record. This galaxy is named Max 0416Y1, and it is the subject of this video. In this video, we will explore this amazing discovery and what it means for our understanding of the cosmos. How did astronomers discover this galaxy, and what did they learn from it? To answer these questions, we need to talk about a powerful telescope called the Atacama Large Millimeter Submillimeter Array, or ALMA, which is located in Chile and can observe radio waves from space. Radio waves are a type of electromagnetic radiation that has longer wavelengths and lower frequencies than visible light. Radio waves can penetrate through dust and gas that block visible light, allowing astronomers to see deeper into space and reveal hidden structures and phenomena. ALMA is composed of 66 antennas that work together as one giant telescope. By combining the signals from these antennas, ALMA can achieve very high resolution and sensitivity, which means it can see very small and faint objects in the sky. ALMA can also observe different frequencies of radio waves, which correspond to different elements and molecules in space. For example, it can detect radio waves emitted by oxygen atoms, carbon monoxide molecules, or dust particles. Using ALMA, astronomers observed a galaxy named Max 0416Y1, which is located 13.2 billion light-years away from Earth. This galaxy was first detected by the Hubble Space Telescope, which can observe visible light. Hubble saw this galaxy as a tiny red dot in the sky, which indicated that it was very far away and very old. Hubble also saw that this galaxy was part of a cluster of galaxies that acted as a gravitational lens, which is a phenomenon where a massive object bends the light from a more distant object behind it, magnifying and distorting its image. Thanks to this effect, ALMA was able to observe this galaxy with more detail and clarity. What ALMA saw was astonishing. It saw that this galaxy had a nebula, a cloud of gas and dust, that showed signs of both star formation and star death. A nebula can have different shapes, colors, and sizes depending on its composition, temperature, density, and interaction with nearby stars. Some nebulae are the birthplaces of stars, where gas and dust collapse under their own gravity and heat up until they ignite nuclear fusion. Some nebulae are the remnants of stars, where stars die and eject their outer layers into space. Some nebulae are both. But how did ALMA detect these signs of star formation and star death within the nebula? It did so by analyzing the radio waves emitted by oxygen atoms and dust particles in the nebula. Oxygen atoms are created when hydrogen atoms fuse together inside stars, releasing energy and light. The oxygen atoms then emit radio waves that can be detected by ALMA. Astronomers found that there were many oxygen atoms in the nebula, indicating that there were many stars forming there. They estimated that the nebula was producing about 4,000 new stars per year, which is very high compared to other galaxies in the early universe. Dust particles are composed of tiny solid matter that are formed when stars die and eject their outer layers into space. Dust particles also emit radio waves that can be detected by ALMA. Astronomers found that there was a lot of dust in one part of the nebula, indicating that there might have been a star that died there recently. They also noticed that there was a massive cavity in the same part of the nebula, which might be a super bubble from supernova explosions, which are powerful explosions that occur when a massive star runs out of fuel and collapses under its own weight, releasing a huge amount of energy and matter into space. It can create a shock wave that blows away the surrounding gas and dust, creating a bubble-like structure. It can also leave behind a dense core called a neutron star or a black hole, depending on its mass. The astronomers were able to create images of the nebula showing the distribution of oxygen atoms and dust particles, as well as the location of the superbubble. 
These images are stunning and reveal the complexity and diversity of the nebula. They also show how the nebula is shaped by the feedback from the stars, both in their birth and death. This discovery is amazing and challenges our models and expectations because it shows us how stars were born and died in one of the first galaxies ever formed. It also shows us how stars influence their environment by creating oxygen atoms, dust particles, and superbubbles within the nebula. These elements could affect the future evolution of the galaxy and its potential to host planets and life. This discovery is also challenging because it contradicts some of our assumptions and predictions about how galaxies evolve and interact with their environment. For example, we expected that galaxies in the early universe would have less oxygen atoms and dust particles than galaxies in the present universe because they had less time to produce them. However, this galaxy seems to have a lot of them, suggesting that it was very efficient and fast at forming stars and recycling their material. We also expected that galaxies in the early universe would have less feedback from their stars because they had less massive stars that could explode as supernovae. However, this galaxy seems to have a lot of feedback from its stars, as evidenced by the superbubble that might have been created by multiple supernova explosions. This feedback could have a positive or negative effect on the galaxy, depending on how it regulates or disperses its gas and dust. We also expected that galaxies in the early universe would have more regular shapes than galaxies in the present universe because they had less interactions with other galaxies that could distort them. However, this galaxy seems to have an irregular shape, as seen by its nebula, which has different regions with different properties. This shape could be influenced by the gravitational lensing effect of the cluster of galaxies that it belongs to or by some internal dynamics that we don't fully understand. These challenges and contradictions show us that we still have a lot to learn about the early universe and stellar life cycles. We need more data and more powerful telescopes to observe more galaxies like this one and compare them with our models and simulations. One of these telescopes is the James Webb Space Telescope, which will be able to observe more elements and molecules than ALMA, such as carbon, nitrogen, water, or methane. Webb will also be able to complement ALMA's observations and provide us with a more complete picture of this galaxy and others like it. In conclusion, we have explored a recent discovery of a distant galaxy that reveals the life and death of stars in the early universe. This discovery is amazing because it shows us how stars were born and died in a galaxy that is 13.2 billion light years away from Earth, which means we are seeing it as it was when the universe was only 600 million years old. This discovery also challenges our models and expectations of how galaxies evolve and interact with their environment. It could help us better understand the stellar life cycles and the evolution of galaxies in the early universe. However, this discovery also raises some questions and challenges that need to be addressed by future observations with more powerful telescopes, such as the James Webb. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to share them with me.